I do want to commend my friend from Georgia, Mr. Speaker. He speaks eloquently. Uh, I hated to lose dear friend John Linder from here in this body, the brilliant man with great class. Um, but since he is gone, I am delighted to have Rob Woodall here in his stead. Uh, just clear thinking, articulate, and makes the case that the American people need to hear. And speaking of messages the American people need to hear, this is November 5th. 2015. It was November 5th, 2009, when a major in the United States Army at Fort Hood, Texas, who had given plenty of warnings that he was a ticking time bomb who was going to kill Americans, particularly American soldiers, especially if he were ordered to go overseas, because he would, he would uh, much prefer to kill American soldiers than he would go overseas and risk killing a fellow Muslim. Having heard about people at, at, uh, in the United States Army, as I was in for four years, who had to deal with Major Hassan, it is appalling that political correctness led to this man being allowed to remain in the military, ever being promoted, and being assigned to counsel Trouble soldiers, incredible. But political correctness has become more and more prominent. Yeah, it was November 5th of 2009. President Obama had been in office since January of that year. Major Hassan had been uh, in the military during the Bush administration. He should never have been promoted. There were warning signs that we hear about after the fact, but nobody wanted to be the one to stand up and say, this man is a threat. He's a radical Islamist. He's a threat not only to the good order and discipline of the United States, he's a threat to the very lives of our military members. Our military let those victims down at Fort Hood, Texas, before the shooting ever occurred. That is almost unbearable, but what becomes unbearable is the fact that six years later, victims who are still alive of Major Hassan are still being mistreated by this administration. Article by Jacob Brooks, J.C. Jones, and the Colleen Daily Herald. Today in the paper said six years after the November 5th, 2009 shooting at Fort Hood, at least one victim is still fighting for overdue benefits. Former Fort Hood Staff Sergeant Alonzo Lunsford, Jr., said pain, betrayal, disrespect, and patriotism all come to mind when he thinks about that tragic day. He said, it's a lot. It's really a lot that goes through my head. He was shot seven times by Nadal Hassan, the Army psychiatrist who opened fire on unsuspecting fellow soldiers at a Fort Hood medical processing building for deploying soldiers. Six years later, the building's been torn down. Many of the soldiers who were there have since moved on, either no longer in Army 
or stationed elsewhere. Hassan, an army major at the time of the shooting, was found guilty of killing 12 soldiers and one civilian on August 23, 2013, following a 12-day court-martial at Fort Hood. Days later, he was sentenced to die and is currently on death row at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, awaiting automatic appeals. It took Congress battling and finally putting language in a bill that the Army and the Defense Department finally could not ignore, that finally put enough pressure on the Army to do the right thing by these victims. And that is, for heaven's sake, they were victims of an attack in the war against America by radical Islam. As Muslim friends in the Middle East, leaders in the Middle East who are Muslims have asked on different visits I've had in the Middle East, why is it that this administration does not understand radical Islamists, particularly the Muslim Brotherhood, is at war with the United States? You keep helping the people who are at war with you, the Muslim Brotherhood. They recognize it all over the Middle East. Muslims over there scratch their heads, moderate Muslims, and wonder what's wrong with America. Now, I met a number of the survivors of the shooting six years ago today when the Purple Hearts were finally awarded number of us were there from Congress because it was an important day and they needed to know members of Congress do care. So we were there as representatives of this body and all of those within it who recognized the loss and the sacrifice occurred at the hands of someone who is at war with the United States, a part of the bigger radical Islamist movement. And it's rather ironic that as we think about and talk about the violations of the Iran Treaty, yes, it is a treaty despite the Senate's unwillingness to call it what it is, and the administration obviously won't call it what it is, but the violations of the Iran Treaty by Iran are still resulting in this administration sending billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to people who want to kill us and to eliminate our way of life. Yet this same administration sending billions and billions and billions of dollars to our enemies can't scrap together mere hundreds of dollars to send to someone like Staff Sergeant Alonzo Lunsford. Article says he's now in North Carolina. I was impressed when I met him. He seems to be a very sharp man, a patriot, someone who cares about America. But like many of the victims, the wounds go even deeper than the shots that were fired. In his case, seven times he was shot. Ah, oh, what a horrible day. And yet this administration becomes accomplices to the after the crime episode and damage by still refusing to acknowledge it for what it was and pay these patriotic service members the money they have coming as people who were wounded in the line of duty. It's ridiculous that this administration will send billions and billions to our enemies who have already said, with all the billions that Obama is going to make sure that we get, uh, we're going to be able to finance more, help Hamas more, help Hezbollah more. 
We're going to be able to help those who kill Americans. And what does the Obama administration do? They want to make sure that nothing gets in the way of them sending money to people that want to kill Americans and people who have killed Americans. Report out just this week indicates that Iran may be responsible for at least 12 percent of the Americans killed in Iraq. I can't help but think, based on those I've talked to in trips to Iraq and those who have researched even further, that when we get to the bottom line, it will likely be a lot more than 12 percent. But even so, the country, the radical Islamist leaders in charge are guilty of killing Americans. And this administration rewards them by sending them money while, whether it's intentional or sheer intentional neglect, refuses to acknowledge the patriotism, the act of war against our members of the United States Army and the United States military and the one civilian that was killed, refuses to acknowledge and adequately appreciate those patriots that were killed or wounded in the line of duty in an act of war by Major Nadal Hassan. So the question arises, if this administration, either through neglect or intent, is so calloused and uncaring toward its own military members, then what's, what's going on now that is going to result in future Americans, military members being killed? How many more Major Nadal Hassans are there in the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, God, I hope and pray that people like Nadal Hassan are not still being promoted because nobody wants to, in this administration, under this administration, under this commander-in-chief, rise up and say, this guy is giving all the indications of being a radical Islamist that will one day explode and kill Americans. We've seen record numbers of generals, officers with stars on their epaulets being fired. We've seen, and I personally, I, 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 Edward Snowden to be a traitor, but having tried felony cases, including death penalty cases, And coupled with my experience here in Congress of, of trying to advise and help whistleblowers and having seen this administration turn against whistleblowers, use their own department they work in to destroy their careers, use the Department of Justice to harass them. And if it's somebody that has very damaging evidence, about wrongdoing by this administration, then they will convene a grand jury to investigate and harass, never mind that it drives a spouse to a hospital near breakdown, never mind the damage that it does to those patriotic whistleblowers who just want the government to do the right thing in all things. I'd have to recognize, if I were sentencing Edward Snowden for his treason, that in this administration, someone that were to come forth, if Edward Snowden had done this, and come before superiors in this administration, he would likely have been destroyed. A grand jury convened 
attempts to put him in jail, attempts to destroy his evidence, his evidence in mitigation of whatever the sentence was for the treason, because under this administration, I've struggled with people who wanted to get truth out. Where do you go? Eric Holder, as attorney general, was not going to help a whistleblower if they had information that was damaging to the administration. No, he was the head of the largest criminal defense firm in America defending the actions in this administration and going after and trying to destroy anybody who came forth with damaging evidence, particularly if it could have come before the election in 2012. Loretta Lynch will always be a blot on the reputation of the United States Senate because she made clear she thought that the things Eric Holder did in violation of the Constitution, in contempt of Congress, the disingenuity and dishonesty, they were okay in her book, and they confirmed her anyway. So the indications are things haven't gotten any better than they were. What do you do if you're a patriotic whistleblower in this administration and you want to out a Nadal Hussain? You want to come forward with, with documentation that shows this administration has acted inappropriately? It's been made clear to people. You raise your head up to try to speak up and speak truth then we will make you rue the day you ever worked for the government. So, we won't help with mere hundreds of dollars to American patriots who were wounded in an act of war and obviously 13 killed in an act of war by radical Islamists. We won't even call radical Islam what, ra what moderate Muslims in the Middle East recognize that it is. And a man of great courage, and I think will end up being recognized as one of the great leaders of the Middle East of any age, President al-Sisi, gets the back of the hand most of the time from this administration when he has had the courage to stand up to imams in a room, looking them in the eye and say, it's time to take back our religion from the radicals. Because of his courage, because of his recognizing the radical, the threat that radical Islam is, not only to Christians and Jews, but to moderate Muslims, then there's no doubt there are people that want to kill him when this administration ought to be doing everything they can to help them. I was asked by Egyptian leaders, does, does your president not understand that the Apache helicopters that he promised the Muslim brother Morsi that he withheld for so long that we use those to keep the Suez Canal open. Does he not want the Suez Canal open? Does President Obama not care? Well, that would certainly be the indication if you look at the actions of this administration. When I was in Egypt in September, people who want to be friends with the United States, they yearn for, for freedom. They yearn for a strong Egypt free of radical Islam, even though they're Muslims themselves. They, they want to be friends with freedom-loving Americans, and yet with dozens and dozens and dozens of leaders from countries around the world, including Russia, top leaders from countries around the world being there 
to note the incredible historic event in world history when Egypt, after having gotten rid of the ra radical Islamist Muslim brother Morsi, who was refusing to keep his conduct within the requirements of their constitution, was removed after the biggest peaceful demonstration in the history of the world. Over 30 million people are said to have gone to the streets to demand his removal. After Morsi's removed, people of vision like Sisi took over and they dug another lane to the one Suez Canal. So there's two lanes for a big part of it there. That was a historic day in June. The people of Egypt should have been lauded by all of those in this administration. Yet not only did this administration not care to recognize the great historic feat of Egypt struggling as it is to achieve greatness once again, they didn't even send anybody from Washington. ISA went, Congress was represented. I was not allowed to go, of course, because Speaker Boehner wasn't allowing people like me who spoke up for what we believe is right to travel. And according to his staff, uh, Speaker Boehner saw taxpayer funded travel as a reward for people that apparently voted like he wanted them to, which kind of sounds like it would be a crime. But uh, nonetheless, we did, we were represented. Congress was represented there, but not the administration. Leaders from around the world was, were there, not this administration. It's time to recognize the good Muslims the moderate Muslims in the world with whom we can be friends, who want to be our friends, who want to work with us, and recognize those like the Muslim Brotherhood who want to destroy our way of life. And it's time to stop the, the political correctness that got 13 people killed at Fort Hood six years ago today and got so many more wounded. So, what is, since this administration doesn't want to properly recognize efforts to keep the Middle East peaceful and out of the hands of radical Islamists like the Muslim Brotherhood, um, well, we had the Iran Treaty that this administration pushed and the Senate refused to take up and vote on as a treaty, because the Corker Bill clearly didn't apply. The Iranian treaty did include uh, terms about ballistic missiles, about weapons buying, about release of money under the sanctions, uh, it did change the terms of the non-proliferation treaty. It was clearly a treaty. It really will be another blot on the Senate's reputation that they did not stop that by taking a vote on ratification. It wouldn't have gotten the two-thirds required, and then we could have prevented the hundred billion plus, we're told hundred billion or so each year or thereafter, that will be going to a country that, according to this news this week, where death to America stands despite the nuclear deal. This uh, report from AFP dated November 2nd from Tehran says a clear majority of Iranian legislators said Monday the Islamic Republic will not abandon the slogan death to America despite its July nuclear accord with world powers. Quote, 
the martyr nurturing nation of Israel is not at all prepared to abandon the slogan of death to America under the pretext of a nuclear agreement, unquote. 192 members of Iran's 290-seat parliament said in a statement carried by a state news agency, RNA. They said the slogan chanted at the weekly Friday prayers in mosques and at protests had, quote, turned into the symbol of the Islamic Republic in all struggling nations. So let's look, Mr. Speaker, at what has occurred since the Iran Treaty that was not ratified was placed into being by this administration and by the Senate looking the other way. Well, they've had bl ballistic missile tests. They've had joint military operations with Russia and Syria. Those certainly violate the terms of the Iran deal. They've had open violations of international travel bans. We've had a cyber attack from there. We've had arrest of a U.S. resident, Nazar Zaka. Death to America is still their chant. And yet, here's this story from October 21st by Reuters. It says the United States, Britain, France, Germany called on Wednesday for the United Nations Security Council's Iran Sanctions Committee to take action over a missile test by Tehran that they said violated a U.N. ban. In a letter detailing, or letter containing details of the launch, they said the ballistic missile was inherently capable of delivering a nuclear weapon. The letter seen by Reuters said, or was sent to the committee after the United States raised the issue in the 15-member Security Council. Quote, we trust that this information will assist the committee in its responsibility to examine and take appropriate action in response to violations of U.N. Security Council resolutions. Diplomats have said it was possible for the Sanctions Committee to blacklist additional Iranian individuals or entities if it determined that the missile launch had breached the U.N. ban. However, they said Russia and China, which have opposed the sanctions on Iran's missile program, any such moves. Quote, the United States will continue to press the Security Council respond effectively to any future violations Full and robust enforcement of all relevant U.N. measures is and will remain critical, unquote. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Power, said in a statement on Wednesday. Now, the reason that the United States is has sent this letter, participated in it, uh, asking the U.N. to take appropriate action is because this administration is gutless to do what needs to be done. You have Iran... We now, it's been confirmed, they killed so many hundreds responsible for the death of so many Americans. And this administration struck a bad deal with them that could never get two-thirds of the Senate to ratify it. So we just act like it's a treaty that's ratified even though it isn't, but is gutless to stand up to Iran and say, you violated the deal. We're not going to allow 100 to $150 billion to go to you while you continue to say death to America. You continue to have ballistic missile tests. You continue to have joint operations in violation of our deal with Russia and Syria. You continue in open violation of international travel bans. You continue to attack us or have cyber attacks from your country. And you continue to stir up violence against the United States. You're not getting any money. How about giving just a little bit of that in to the victims of Nadal Hassan? How about giving it to the victims of radical Islamist violence? How about giving it to the victims of over 400 days in captivity in Iran under the Ayatollah Khomeini's leadership? 
This administration's got to act. This, this is outrageous. And then we have uh, International Business Times report. Uh, airline violates terms of nuclear deal by purchasing planes to use in the Syrian war. Uh, this says one of Iran's commercial airlines last week bought a U.K. manufactured jet with the aim of using it to deliver Iranian soldiers and weapons to Syria. Purchase of the aircraft by an Iranian concern represents a clear violation of the deal brokered by the administration, talking about Obama administration, U.S. President Barack Obama. It's outrageous. The Iran deal needs to be brought to an end. No more money needs to go to Iran. No money for killers, for terrorists, but money to the victims in our United States military.